It may not look it, but spring has begun in Hokkaido. It's the end of March, and I've come to Nishioka Park once again. The last time I was here was over a year ago. I had an amazing morning then, and came away with some wonderful memories and images, like this pano shot. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you have the time, please go and check out the other episode. Today's conditions were not as spectacular as the last time I was here. But I came with an open mind and no expectations. I left with another day of lovely images and wonderful memories. So let me explain what's happening here. So I have this tree uh, with these branches that are somewhat arching over the frozen water here. And I'm trying to isolate them from the background over there. And there's a bit of a relationship between the snow, the reeds in the bottom, and these branches here. Now the problem that I have is that they, um, there's a bit of a distance between the one that's closest to me and the one that's furthest away. And I'm not really a fan of focus stacking. I changed composition several times before coming back to my original one, and I decided I wasn't going to focus stack. The sun has risen and it's starting to hit the tree line on the opposite side of the water here and in the background there. And it, again, it's a beautiful location and I'm, I'm quite happy to be shooting here. I am struggling a little bit with this image though. And I've moved around this tree from top to bottom, left to right. I think I have found one now. And I've spent uh, a bit too long here, I think, struggling with this one, trying to make it happen. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'll throw it up and uh, you let me know what you think. As I'm sure you're aware, I set up my camera, I walk away, and then I run back and pick it up again, cutting the return trip to give the illusion that I'm being filmed. Anyway, it was at the moment of turning around that I spotted my next shot, right here. I ran back, grabbed my camera, and I went off to follow my curiosity once again. All right, there's a beautiful little sapling <clears throat> just here. And I'm trying to use the curves of the snow and the frozen water as a way to frame this sapling. Uh, there's a transition from the snow and uh, a little divot, uh, a hollow, right behind the sapling, and then beautiful curvy lines going all the way up into the, fore, into the background. So I've got it in a one by one aspect ratio once again. And uh, I think I might, because I can't, I can't change it on here to a five by four, but I think I might put it into a five by four. Oh, that's very nice. And uh, turn the information off. Sometimes the information on the screen can be quite distracting when composing. It really is just a matter of balancing out all of the elements. There we go. Oh. You always have to be careful when photographing in snow and sand that you don't walk through the shot that you want to get. So you're going to have to be cloning out footprints or just don't take the shot. So. I was very careful to only walk up to this point here and not explore around there. I wanted to make sure that I got this shot before I explored onto the other side or even move forward to capture that S-curve over there because if I had taken the S-curve first, I would have destroyed my image in the foreground here. Uh, I've moved on to that kind of S-curve up there that was more in the background of the sapling shot. Now, shooting that by itself is a much more abstract shot and it's beautiful. 
I, uh, I initially shot it with a 16 by 9 and then I, I switched it up to a 1 by 1, a tighter crop just on that middle curve there. And uh, I think it's probably a little branch or something that's frozen in the water there, just sticking out. Um, absolutely beautiful image and uh, it makes me love winter even more. Uh, I, I think this morning uh, and this week I was griping a lot about the winter and I'm ready for the summer. But uh, man, winter can keep coming if it's going to be serving up beautiful images like this. Right. I mean, sometimes when you get a beautiful location, you can just shoot the heck out of it. And uh, it's hard to move on because you're just so happy and you have such a wonderful feeling connected with that space. And uh, man, I have a wonderful feeling connected with this location now. Absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed shooting this. Uh, I've been probably here for at least a half an hour. I'm just enjoying being here and listening to the sounds of the stream running in the background. I think it's probably time to, to move on. I'll have a look-see and uh, if I find anything else, uh, we will continue this adventure. Hydrangea symbolize heartfelt emotion and gratitude in Japan. I was certainly feeling that as I explored this local park. All of the images from this day were taken within about 100 meters or 100 yards from each other. So it's only fitting that I focused my lens at these climbing hydrangea. The blue in the shadows of the snow were a wonderful contrast to the warm chestnut colors of the seed pods and the beautiful pale yellows in the petals. Let's see. Oh, that's lovely. Time had seemed to slow down this morning. Intrusive thoughts about work, politics, or social media followers was the furthest thing from my mind. I was reconnecting with myself by reconnecting with the sights, sounds, and smells around me. I walked to a small stream that flows from the frozen reservoir that we saw earlier, and it was a good choice. I captured an abstract image unlike any that I've captured before. I'm going to throw on a polarizer and an ND filter. Let's see. Where is my polarizer? Did I bring my polarizer? Ah, yes, I did. So many pouches. Yeah. So anyway, there's this ice formation right inside the, uh, the stream there. And the light is hitting it, which creates a, a lot of glare. So I want to cut that glare down, but also the water is moving right underneath of it. And I want to see if I can... There we go. Uh, I want to see if I can smooth out that water as well to give a nice contrast of the ice and... and, uh, and the water. So I think I'm going to try a uh, six-stop filter first. Yeah. And uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, we'll try again. There we go. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Okay. Whoa. Look at those shapes. There's these amazing little shapes in the in the water due to the uh, the longer shutter speed. That's pretty cool. I just want to double check and make sure that my polarizer is on fully. Oh, wow. 
it was not all the way up. Okay. Let's try this again and play. Oh, completely different. Yeah, inky black now. Really dark inky black. Uh, where before there was uh, lines in the water caused by the reflection. I like that. I think, uh, I think I'm going to go back to partial. Yeah, partial is best. I'll throw uh, the best one up on the screen now. Please take a look. Well, there we go, guys. This little ice formation down here is starting to melt and uh, I think I am starting to thaw out myself. I was freezing this morning, but uh, I'm starting to warm up. There was no fireworks. There was no amazing sunrise. There was no, uh, you know, grand vistas. This was all just very intimate, uh, close up, minimalistic, beautiful winter photography and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share. Hit the notification bell if you want to be let known when I upload future episodes and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys.